Thank you for staying with us. So what is an invalid voter registration? Referencing a publication from Business Day from last year, impressive resources are being deployed to ensure more Nigerians are registered and have their permanent voters cards. PVCs from 2023, popular belief even within um, politicians is that the higher the voter turnout, the harder it is to rig. However, increasing voter turnout is not easy even when we ignore how difficult it is to register and collect PVCs. On the eve of the 2019 election, INEX data indicated that over 11 million PVCs have not been collected and the state with the lowest collection rate at 71% was Ogun State. The states with over 95% collection rate were Gombe at 95.76, Katsina at 98.69, Kebi at 95.13, and Taraba at 97.30. And in total, 15 states had collection rates of over 90%. While the veracity of these numbers may be questioned, considering our national <laughs> predilection to not um, account properly, we cannot ignore the stories told by frustrated Nigerians about how difficult it was to collect their PVCs, especially in opposition strongholds. Another challenge is the mass collection of PVCs by influential people ostensibly to distribute within their communities. It is anyone's suspicion if this actually happens or if PBCs are handed out to those who can be instructed on how to vote. This could explain underage voters a lot better than trying to understand how INEC could register children in the first place. As the election draws closer, we're asking how prepared are we? How efficient is the PVC drive? And what is INEC doing to ensure a good number of eligible voters are properly registered? Um, we'd love to hear what you have to say. So remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp at 0818-038-4663. Tweet at us at Weishio Africa One with the hashtag Waste Show. So, ladies, do you have your voters card? I do. Yes, money, I money. do. I have mine. <laughs> <laughs> I have mine. I'm very pro Nigerian. So, yeah. so my question then would be: Glad that you both have your voters cards, but how long have you had them, and how easy was it to register and get them? Well, I think uh, when I, I did, uh, I had the temporary one initially and then I heard of the process we had to go to the local government oh, and, right. and it was truthfully it was quite seamless because I sat down it wasn't uh, very cumbersome they just took me through the different stages mm. and um, told me when to come and collect it that was a few weeks later they had referred me to the local government to go to and they went through and I was able to collect it so in my local government at uh, where I registered, mm. I think it was a seamless process. However, there are all, all kinds of stories out there about people not being able to find it or mm. their names were not there or they had gotten information that their PVCs were ready, but they go they there and, and then one story already. or the yeah. other. Yeah. So it's still a process that needs to be synchronized across board mm -hmm. so that people can have access to these PVCs and then they also need to enlighten people. A lot of people don't still do still not don't know, what the know that, yeah, the Mani, process. what was your experience? Mm -hmm. Mine was as uh, seamless as hers, although we had to do a lot of waiting, you know, mm -hmm. for some reason they just tell you to stay on the queue and you're there for like the whole day. Yeah. But it was okay, it was peaceful. Okay. But that's not what we have right now. That's not what we're hearing now. So a lot of people are trying to get their registrations do their registrations to get their um, voters cards and we hear about disruptions by unknown gunmen mm. so oh, unknown uh, gunmen, unknown gunmen <laughs> <or whatever. laughs> however, however you wish yeah, to define whatever. it whatever yeah but, so i mean i'm glad that your processes were seamless mine was quite tedious i mm. must admit so first of all even finding the location right. where I was meant to mm -hmm. register. I got. I went to the first place where they said, oh, go there, that's where they're doing it. And we got there, they said, no, it's not here, go somewhere. So I think I went through about three different local government mm. offices before I found the right place. Really? And then got there and found a huge queue of people hanging around. Okay, so what What's are we doing? What's going on? Nobody, Nobody seemed to knows. be able to give any direction. Hmm. So I'm trying hmm. to access a gate to say, can I get help? And then as I walk through the gate, somebody's yelling at me, I'm pointing at the wall apparently the instructions were stuck to the wall but mm. then if you have no reference point or context mm. the, the 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 what was written on the wall was like gibberish to me made exactly. no sense so there was nobody to sort of say to me okay you need to do this you need to do that so it took the making a few phone calls to find somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody to and send somebody direct exactly and they said oh no don't don't go to this place so we have somebody so we're so just another place down the road why don't you go there and that's so it was a very mm. 
if I wasn't yes. determined, mm. yes. right, you it would just very give up. I actually yeah. see so many people just yeah. giving up and going back home, which is also very yeah. discouraging. Yeah. It is, it yeah. is. And I mean, even the collection process for us was then made easier because of this person. But really and truly, it was a frustrating process. In fact, now that you said it, I remember that um, initially money. the local government where I picked mine mm. wasn't the initial local the way, government. Yeah. It was a tedious process initially until I was given um, information mm. that I should try Another, XYZ one. and then yeah. I went there and that was where the process was Mine a lot was more easy. seamless. It was easy. It was just the waiting but mm. it was straightforward. But I mean this truly should be a simple process. Why, why does this have to be so tedious? In today's <laughs> digital age where you're collecting the same bits of information. I mean, let's not go into the databases <laughs> <laughs> of data that the government already collects, but should this really be a tedious process? But I mean, let's get into um, the conversation and get Aki to join us. So Aki Braithwaite is an expert in growing corporate revenue through creating and leading high performance customer service teams. He has extensive experience in strategic implementation of customer relationship management environment frameworks and systems. He's an innovative transformational leader with vast contact center management experience in rapid growth markets. He wears many hats, one of which is a politician, and that's why he's joining us today. Thank you so much for being with us, Aki. How thank are you doing you, today? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me join awesome. the conversation. Uh, <laughs> We've been looking forward happy to happy Easter. Happy yes, Easter. happy Easter. Easter. We should actually say happy Easter to our viewers <laughs> as well. Um, but thank you. I hope you've had a good Easter. I hope I it was restful, if uh, nothing else. And it's a good way of crowning it off by right. being here today. <laughs> Absolutely. With you ladies. That's nice. So I think I'd like to start off with your experience in obtaining your PVC, um, what was your experience like? I would describe it as smooth. Um, I voted in as many elections as I can remember since I got back into Nigeria. Uh -huh. um, and I'd like to say that INEC has really impressed me. Uh, they've been doing, they've been trying really hard, uh, given all the difficulties of this country. Uh, each election cycle, I think they're getting better and better and better. Yeah. And some people don't want them to succeed. You yeah, know, I might add. There is that too. Uh, sure. But despite all that, um, I must say that they have achieved quite a lot that I, I really would want to give them kudos. Yeah. yeah. So okay. yeah, my own personal experience has been okay. Um, I, I've been able to get my PVC vote different elections. Yeah. Uh, and even my election voting has been more like a picnic each time that oh, I've gone out to fantastic. vote. Yeah, so uh, that's probably because of where, where you've been voting. voting as well. yeah. yeah, absolutely. But I mean, I, I like that we are starting off on a positive note. Now, before you joined us, we were talking about the different issues that impact um, the entire PVC process. Um, we talked about knowledge and we talked about trust. I'd like to hear your thoughts on what you think are the key challenges that are standing between Nigerians today and acquiring their PVCs? Okay, so let's take trust. Um, my lawyer friend here knows that uh, when you want to enter in a contract with anybody, it's not based on trust, mm. you know, because otherwise what's the need of having a contract? So uh, I don't think we necessarily need to trust, you know, the system. It's better to come at it from a position of I don't trust. But the important thing is that it's your right. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, it's also your responsibility. It's a civic responsibility to vote. Um, it's a foundational aspect of democracy. You can't talk about democracy without voting. I mean, during the military era, mm. there's no talk about voting. You, yeah. you obey the maximum you know, leader, and he gets whatever it is that he wants. You know. But we're now living in a democracy, even if it's what some people call civil rule, uh, or rule by civilians. But all the same, it's still a democracy that allows you and me to exercise our rights, you know, our fundamental rights. Now, in America, even as we speak today, which is kind of like one of the oldest democracies, there's still voter suppression going on, you know. So it's not even as if People go out there and, you know, it's a, so it's a privilege yeah. that they're still fighting for the rights to vote. On the other hand, you know, the irony here in Nigeria is that we don't have to fight to, to get the right to vote. They're even begging us, oh, please, come and register mm -hmm. and all that. In America, they're putting up all sorts of obstacles in the way of some folks, you know, to prevent them from being able to vote. So I think we should embrace the opportunity 
uh, we should look at it in terms of, yep, okay, I don't trust these guys. I don't need to trust them, but I'm going to go ahead and get my PVC, whatever it is, is going to get me through that, uh, into that ballot box and, and, and really exercise my vote. Now, whatever it is that I meet along the way, p people will have different experiences. So some people will have it easy and some people will have it hard. Whatever your experience is, I'll say, just make sure that you are adamant about getting whatever your right is. Um, and you will eventually get it. You know, whatever it takes, just make sure that you do get that, um, that uh, card. Now, there's a role that you as a citizen play. There's a role that the INEC you know, authority plays. They can't do it all by themselves. Okay. So I think that if you look at the trouble that they've gone through, um, they've, uh, I think, had to really face up to the, the reality that they are a major gateway you know, to how this society is going to run. And I can't really fault them too badly in what they've done so far. So let's encourage them uh, and let's do everything that we can to make it happen. Now, what has prevented people in the past, uh, one of it is violence. You know, uh, the whole idea of trying to, you know, get people to scare people away from voting. The other is the often used term apathy. Um, a lot of people feel, you know, what's the point? Um, and then the issue around apathy is also one of, you know, what, which candidate am I voting for? I don't even have a viable candidate to vote for. Um, but assuming like one of you decided to run, or all of you decided to run, you know, then we're giving people the opportunity to now have candidates. What we've done so far is that we've allowed the major parties to sort of say, oh, no, this yeah, is a person, this. where that, that's all the choice you have. Yeah. But that's, it doesn't have to be like that, you know. We can say, no, 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 this is not the choice that we're going for. Uh, let's even look at what other parties, you know, have to offer. Yeah. And, and if you don't even like what other parties mm -hmm. have to offer, you can also suggest uh, what other parties should be. It's your country. It's, it's your right. It's your, uh, you take, have take every, the yes, by, take you the know, by the we're not living people. in a monarchy. Yeah. This is a <laughs> republic, you know. Mm. So um, we all together have a right to deal with and get ourselves uh, to change the government. A vote yeah. Yeah. is a right to change status quo. A vote yeah. is a right to say, no, I don't want this person. I want that person. And I cast my vote. Okay. Can I ask a question? Okay. I mean, well, I, can, I hear what you say, but to a large extent, we have a lot of ignorant Nigerians who do not even know how um, powerful they, they can are. be with yeah. their votes. So where is, whose responsibility is it to be able to enlighten and educate the people on how they can use their power in their votes to be able to make those decisions. Because I don't see INEC doing it. It's your responsibility. It's the it's citizen's your responsibility. responsibility yes, or it's your responsibility. You, you have, but a lot of them you have do an not influence, know. You have an influence over a lot of people. Oh. And therefore, it is if you and I begin to uh, take our responsibility seriously, you know, um, all those around you that are within your sphere of influence, okay. you have a responsibility to them. How many people have you told this morning, you know, and educated about, look, you must, you know, do whatever is your duty to do. So we have to break it down to the people. I, I bet you that you can influence 50 people. True. Sure. Within your sphere of influence, you can, you can influence 50. Well, what about the system? The system, don't worry about the system. The system is you and me. Okay. You know, the system is the political parties who probably aren't doing what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay, so I guess that's what she's trying to say. So it's, there's someone that's supposed to do it. So even if we know that we have our own responsibilities as citizens to also try to enlighten the general public, but whose responsibility, whose first responsibility is it? Is it, is it the government? Okay, if you talk is to the average the person in America, or, or Britain, you ask them. Tell you, I'm a Republican. Yeah. I'm a, How I'm did a Democrat, they get there? You know, 
You it right took a system through the, to get them through, through the to school. the schools, yes, through education. Yeah. So yeah. All of this yeah. so the system has is created from somewhere yeah. to be able yeah. to yeah. give so, that So that your constitution access. has allowed you to set up political parties. Okay? Yeah. okay. The, the job of a political party is citizen education, mm -hmm. is to flag where the government is going wrong, mm -hmm. is to push for bills and things like that and get the government moving is to take citizens, you know, really where they need to go. When they are out of governance, when they're in governance, then of course they need to. But out of governance, there's a lot of work that, uh, and people should sign up and join the, because that's how you begin the, the conversation. There's a role for the media. Um, Absolutely. In, in these other countries, media take positions. Absolutely. You know where CNN stands. Uh -huh. You know where, um, what's it called? Yeah. What's the other Fox. one? Fox. Fox. You know where yes. Fox stands. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So are they sort of uh, non-partisan? No. You know, so they take a position that, and they take a position based on, on, uh, on interest. The other thing too is that, um, you see people, if you look at NSARS, mm. Mm, why did it become so successful, you mm. know, in, in terms of the outing before it was broken up? Because it was an issue-based gathering. So if you find issues that, that affect people, of course they're going to, okay, look, how can I deal with this issue? Which is part of not influencing mm -hmm. your, your, those that are around you. So look, this issue is it's very, very germane. There's an issue recently that's really doing the rounds, and that's in Lekki, the Lekki Bridge. The, yes. So that's yes. an the issue, whole, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And it's really got people's backs up. Mm -hmm. So the He's question now is, it. okay, so how do we plug into this? You know, what do we do to stop you know, mm -hmm. this tolling and what have you? Okay, uh, let's hold off on that point. Uh, we need to take a quick break, uh, and we'll be right back. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just tuned in, we're discussing 2023 elections, the PVC Drive um, and INEC with Akin Braithwood. So we still love to hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp on 0818-038-4663. Tweet us, us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. So, Manny, you had a question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so before we went on break, we were talking about whose responsibility you know, it is to sensitize the public. So now for the people that know their rights, they know that this is their responsibility and they actually want to participate in everything. Now these people want to do their registration and collect their cards and we see what's going on now. I just think that the issue in Imo State mm. with the unknown gunmen will cause a lot of discouragement in people registering and collecting. So how do you think that the INEC can actually make this process easier? You know, like she talks about digitization and all how it's supposed to help us to make this process easier. So what's your suggestion? How can, we co how can collection be made easier or even registration? Okay, so <clears throat> you don't want people to collect um, physically do their own collection. Yeah, but Is if they're going to be threatening people with guns, they even killed one person and two of the INEC staff are missing as we yeah. speak. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. how do we... I won't go collecting my cards right now if I had to collect my card, if they're going to be unknown government showing up. So how can the INEC make this process easier? Okay, so let's take a couple of step, steps back. I think INEC, again, is doing what they should do and what they can yeah. do. They're not in charge of... Uh, Excuse me. They're not in charge of security, right? Yes. Okay. So somebody's failing in their own duty. And so we need to pinpoint where the failure is. Uh, the security agencies should get up and be up and doing, and they need to do their work. It's important to be able to go there physically because it's something you don't collect by proxy. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, there is an effort that has to be made, an effort. So maybe there could be postal. Yes. Uh, whatever you call it, yes. but we don't even have the postal system up and running mm -hmm. uh, at the moment. So maybe in another ten years' time, um, you know that can be sorted out. All right, but we're where we are right now. So we have to take where we are, 
and say, okay, let's deal with it. <clears throat> I would say to you, don't be frightened by what the gunmen and so forth are doing. There have been countries where there's been uh, civil war and all those kind of things, and people have had to just go and vote, you know. Um, you know, if you recall the ABBA women's um, rebellion, riot. as they say, yeah, some people say it's a riot. Rebe it was a rebellion. You know? <laughs> it was a riot. And, uh, <laughs> they, they were not deterred. They decided that we're going to get the change here and we're mm. going to do it. And over 50 women, you know, Should lost have. their lives. What? Yes, over yes. 50 women, thousands yes. of women were they involved. Marched. And it went on for months. Uh -huh. Okay, it went on for months. So um, I encourage you women to, you see, by the time you women get engaged in the process, um, these gunmen will, will, they will back away to the shadows. Hmm. The other thing is that, you know, as Nigerians, we need to start standing up for our rights, okay? Hmm. Uh, civil rights, civil uh, rights America, a lot of people got killed, all right? They couldn't even have the rights as a human being and just because of the color of their skin they would be uh, mugged and hanged and, and what have you. But they stood up for their rights. We have to stand up against these gunmen. We have to tell them, look, gunmen, you're going to lose this particular uh, game because this is our right. We're not going to let you stop us from exercising what is our right. And the police need to go after them. What the people need to do is to say, find those who did that. Yeah. Okay? And not let up. You know, find the people who did this, prevent, crime prevention too is, is absolutely important. And you know, you see, I truly believe that we have to take things back to the local government hmm? yeah. and to the ward. These guys come from a particular local area, ward and yes. whatever. They can actually fish The neighborhoods need to come alive, yes. okay? Because this is an existential threat. Mm -hmm. What right do they have to say, why, if you don't believe in this, no, well, mind the, yeah. So we need to tell the security agencies not let up on them, because you see, when people don't speak out, that's why you have the expansion of Boko Haram and all that, yes. because people just say, oh well, it's just some bandits or, or well, it's just some people it's have just been gunmen. speaking out. Yeah, so you uh, what has, uh, what no, has no, no, happened? No, you never stop. We need to. Just Do you know how long it took pushing. the civil rights? It yeah. took them more than forty years. Yeah. To get they spoke up, they lost the their family, yeah. they lost yeah. no, children. Yeah. 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 So yeah. We we'll have is. to sacrifice, we we'll have to make is. this sacrifice. And that's what Nigeria we have to realize that if we want to have the change that we yeah. want to yeah. see, we, have yeah. to. we need mm -hmm. sacrifice. Yeah. At some point, the gunman's wife or sister or whatever is going to call him and say, Look, old boy, you've got to stop this. Yeah. You see, so it's, it's soft power, it's hard. Power. We We've to got to get into the psyche of those that are trying to stop us from moving forward. Yeah. Those guys have relatives, don't they? They have people who uh, who know the, who Their they are. Relatives are abroad. And there is well, not, not, not all of them. You know, I was, just I was speaking to my classmates. Hey, that's that's my turn. <laughs> I was telling them. I said the truth is we complain a lot here, mm. which we have every right to complain. But at the end of the day, Nigeria is just sixty years old. Hmm. Well, you know, so it's, it's, it's the it's United States is two hundred, is almost two hundred. Yeah, but it's a relativity years old, issue so about whether we're going in the right direction or not. So it's the regression, I think, that is the key problem. Because mm -hmm. if you really think about where we started from and where we are now, mm -hmm. it truly feels like we are mm -hmm. regressing. So I, I think we're still that's in where the, the challenge is. So even if you want to say that we're young, you want to see some growth. But I, I think that for me, if we come back to this conversation of the voters' cards and we come back to elections mm -hmm. now. Without the voters card, you can't participate. No, exactly. So we all agree that this yeah. is such a powerful tool. But there was something that you mentioned earlier on when you were speaking about the quality of the candidacy. Now, that how does that in itself impact? Because I know I should have my PVC before the election, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then there's the concept of primaries and all of that. Does that also impact this conversation? Does it impact the PVC? Absolutely. Um, so. In, in my party, um, the ADC, uh, one, one of the most important things that we've set ourselves is a task of l encouraging people who have the right pedigree, you know, yeah. to step forward, you know, tapping them on the shoulder and say, look, listen, it's actually your responsibility. You have the competence, you have what it takes. 
don't let the people down. Nigeria needs you, mm -hmm. all right? What's been happening up to now is that we've just accepted to vote for whoever has been presented. Yeah. So we say, okay, let's take the worst of the, or, yeah. or the best of the worst. But what we really need to do is to say, hey, look, you know, like they say, if you want to send your child to school, you look for the best teacher. You know, if you yeah. want to repair your car, you look for the best guy who can fix it. Uh, if you want to fix the electrics in your house, you look for you know, the best guy who can do that. So why, in terms of governance, are you, you accepting anything? You know? So we need to get away from the anything goes um, type of approach, and we need to look for I mean, I would be surprised if you told me that you don't have friends, family members who you know are competent and who you should be uh, tapping on the shoulder and saying, you, you have to got go. to run. Yeah. You, know, you have got to yeah, run. Yeah, I think we do that all the time. Mm. You, you do? Know? Oh, of course. You haven't do. sent anybody my way. <laughs> <laughs> but you know someone is coming your way. You know the person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So for me, I would like to ask this question. Do you think that the um, PBC has helped to reduce election rigging. Do you think so? Yeah, there's a transition. I mean, if you look back, uh, have you voted in the previous yes, elections? I have. Okay, so you'll see that from the era of just them sitting down somewhere and just writing results uh, to the point where people were snatching ballots. I know. So there's been this gradual progression. Now they brought out a new device, which is called the uh, automated yes. biometric yes, yes. Uh, but another voter accreditation that's right. mm. system. system. So that's going to now so take your work? facial. It takes yeah. a picture of your face, mm -hmm. facial recognition, mm -hmm. and then your fingerprint. Mm. So that is, you can see that they, are, they keep trying to improve, all right? And they're showing us that they are making the effort. Mm. So it's now up to the citizen you know, to say, look, I'm keying into this. Yeah. And we're going to really make this thing work. We're going to make it happen. We have to make it happen because they're doing all this for us. Okay? They might as well. They could have decided to just keep things, you know, the way they are. So real kudos to, to the INEC team. Mm. Uh, we're rooting for you guys, uh, if you're listening. Oh. Um, and, uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Keep, keep improving. Keep uh, moving things forward. Awesome. Right. Mani, I think you have a message before we take your oh, okay. question. Noma. Oh, Noma? Oh, me? Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, okay, awesome. So, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways and happy Easter to you all. Considering voting, let us make it a point of duty to obtain our PVC. It is very important. Our PVC is our tool, so is our vote. 2023 is by the corner and it is no longer far. Also, our vote is a holy thing and should not be given to the dogs. The people in government now are dogs <laughs> because they are the wrong people. Let us not make that mistake again because it is deadly and suicidal. My heart bleeds after hearing that a teacher molests 50 pupils in four months. Are the government not supposed to look into educational system in Nigeria? At this rate, the educational system does not mean anything to them. This country has to sit up and live to their responsibilities. Sister Uti, you are welcome back. Looking beautiful as ever. We missed you. My name is Daniel E. Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can almost tell. Thank you so much, Daniel. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. So mm -hmm. you were going to ask the question. So I was going to ask the question about the, the voters' registration mm -hmm. that are invalid, that have been proven to be invalid yeah. now. How does this affect um, the elections where you have a lot of uh, registrations being invalid. Is there a process that helps mm. people to be able to correct that before the election so that they have that opportunity or is it just um, Not a dead end? Point. Okay, it has happened, so there's nothing we can do back. till the next four years, then we can start looking into it. No, you know, that's why the chairman uh, did Bakar. conduct that yes. um, press conference yeah. to let people know. So. There's still, the process goes on till uh, June, all right? So we still have some time to do whatever. And he's advised, he says, look, this is the issue. There are two categories of people here who should be registering, going through this process. The first category are the people who are turned 18 okay. and suddenly 
they've now got the majority. Feel that they have the right to yeah. vote. So this is their opportunity, exercise, you know, yeah, right? All these years rights. they've not had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. They've turned 18. Now uh, they can go ahead and register. Those, those are new registrations. Mm. Then you have those that have registered before, but have now have, you yeah, have you know, so one is that they want to change there, absolutely. PVC so it's saying, saying that if you, if you want to do a new registration, then you've got to fall within that category who's never registered before, okay? Then don't, but some people have gone ahead and done the new registration thing rather than uh, just correcting an existing registration. Okay, so I think a lot of it is, yeah, I think a lot of it is, is, is error, mm. is genuine, innocent oh. error. Although he says that some people have deliberately done that to try and game the system. Mm. But does it invalidate so, <clears throat> both? It invalidates the, the, the new registration that you're trying to okay, do if you're going to. But I'm valid. certain that you can go back and Correct. now do it properly, yeah. So if you've registered before but you've lost your card, then you just go to the system. You've already, in order to register, you know you create an account, mm -hmm. okay, online. And then you go through that account and then say, okay, now it's no, so you select the right category of what you want to do, want to have done. Then there are those who aren't doing it online who would go to the uh, office there. Some of the staff too, obviously didn't know what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So otherwise they would have guided people properly. But I think the reason why he's letting us know, you know, they were doing it in four phases. So this is the last phase, phase you know, the fourth phase of it. Okay. So people have enough time to Sorry, still asking the same themselves. question. Do they, these people now that have to correct their registration, do they have to do so in person? Are you one of them? No. <laughs> um, All right. You, no, you, you should be able to do it online again because okay. you can just go onto the okay. online so thing that makes it and easier. then select the proper mm. uh, section that you oh. need to go through. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So if you had done it, I guess that the last question for me mm -hmm. would be, if you hadn't started the process itself online, if you had done it before at a physical location, are you able to still leverage the digital option? I would believe so, yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, because, because they're both, they, they're both uh, sort of, they, they're, they're integrated. Okay. So yeah. um, that, in fact, if you've registered before, and you put something about your details and you go to, oh, I want to change my location or things. Mm. Should be able to it will just bring up yeah, uh, stuff about you. So okay. it's, a, it's a computerized process. I mean, I'm so impressed, really, to be honest mm. with you, with what We've these guys have achieved. We've come a very long way. Mm. Yeah, they've, they've, this is e-governance now, yeah. Yeah. you know, in flow. Well, I like the fact that you actually <laughs> mentioned e-governance. I think that would be a last question because we've, right. we've actually run out of time. Um, what are your thoughts on digitizing the entire process. So there's a lot of conversation around e-voting um, and the fact that, you know, if we take this one step further from having the cards and having biometrics, what are your thoughts around that space? Okay, so there was a time when you had to go to a bank uh -huh. to do your banking, all right? Mm. And I think about the most sensitive thing, or one of the most sensitive things about your life is your money. Uh, today we have banks that are branchless, all right? So, um, everything is being done through the digital um, processes, okay? Now, I can't remember when last I went to physically to, to my bank. To the bank. Um, so our lives are changing. So whether the government, you know, is slow or whatever, that's the direction that we're headed. So if you look at what INEC has been able to achieve so far, there is, like if you look at um, South Korea, mm. Guys, those guys have just taken this thing to, to the yeah, very, very next level. level. Now, Nigeria is also, amongst nations in the world, is noted for what is happening in fintech. I know it's achieving things mm -hmm. that even other parts. So I'm yeah. extremely confident no, that looking good. at what, what's going on now, I'm extremely it's confident. It's a good think, direction to go. Yeah, on. the guys in INEC, I think that um, they must be made up of some young Mind so that, we're, uh, we're headed in the right direction. That's where we're going. Yes, yes, have yes, yes, okay. Have have I think that's a fantastic that's way to uh, to wrap up the conversation because I think the world is everything is digital now. So that's where we yeah. really should be looking to go. So thank you so much for joining us, Aki. I learned a thing or two today, so it was really nice to have you here. Um, you for our viewers, way. before we go, do ensure that you follow us on Instagram at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. Remember to like, share, and comment. Invite your friends and family to watch and follow us. So if you 
you missed today's quote here it is again whenever we do voter registration we ask why haven't you voted before the response is often no one asked us it's not about telling people what to do it's about sharing what they can do and that's by rosario dawson so we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screens have a good evening